Now open your Bibles with me to the book of Galatians. You really shouldn't have to open up to this one. This one we should all have memorized and should be living. But we're looking at Galatians 2.20. Why don't you say it with me? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the light which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Powerful verse. May the Lord bless his word. Good morning. morning. Happy Sabbath. (laughs) Live by faith. Joe would like this one, I think. Live by faith. There was a burning building in New York City. Four floors up, the firemen spotted a young girl. They couldn't get the ladder truck to the window. She was between, in a window between two buildings and they could not get to her. So what do you think they did? They set up a net and they yelled to her, you have to jump, it's the only way out. And she yelled back, I'm blind, I can't see you. And the fireman yelled, it's okay, we're right below you, jump. And she couldn't do it. And her father showed up. And he got the bullhorn. And he looked up at his little girl. Dad's here. Jump. And she jumped. She jumped so loose and so free, trusting her father, that in four floors of jumping, she neither broke a bone nor got a bruise and lit right in the center of the net. You know what that's called, brothers and sisters? It's called blind faith. Does faith have to be blind? You and I can see the signs of the times, but have you ever seen heaven? Have you ever met Jesus? Do you have any idea if this Bible's true? Do you know how you have to believe all this? By faith. It can tell you prophecies and you can see them come true. But there's prophecies still yet to be fulfilled. And we're seeing things happen in the world where you and I are going to stand out by ourselves. And you and I are going to have to have faith to believe what we believed. So do you understand blind faith? You haven't seen heaven, but you believe in it. That's blind faith. You haven't seen Jesus, you haven't met Jesus, but you believe in him. How many here have seen your angel? You see, you do believe in angels? That's blind faith. And you and I need to follow what God says when he says it. Another man was walking along another path, a narrow path, right along a cliff. And he was younger than he thought. No, he thought he was younger than he was. And he walked too close and the path gave way. And he went over. But as would be, there was a tree sticking out, a branch. And he grabbed it and held on. He's hanging over this cliff. He needs help. He suddenly yells up, is anybody up there? Yes, I'm here. Who's there? The Lord. Lord, help me. Do you trust me? I trust you completely, Lord. Good. Let go of the branch. What? I said, let go of the branch. Is anybody else up there?
Think about that for a second. Does God know what he's doing? Does everything always go like a bed of roses? Would you follow God blindly? Now that might sound like you're going the wrong way, but it's true, brothers and sisters. You and I have to have faith in the word of God. And what it says, you need to follow no matter what you humanly believe. You've got to go according to the faith of the Word of God. Someone once said, if you believe what you like in the gospel and you reject what you don't like in the gospel, you're not following the gospel. You're following your own belief. Now, I want to repeat that. <clears throat> because this is rampant today, brothers and sisters. People telling me what they believe. There's people telling me what they believe this book says. But I'm going to repeat it. If you believe what you like in the gospel, and you don't believe what you don't like in the gospels, you don't believe in the gospels. You believe in yourself. You believe what you believe. And it won't work. You and I have got to follow God. Romans 14, 22 and 23. If you'll turn in your Bibles, Romans 14, 22 and 23. I'd like to challenge your faith today because your faith is about to be challenged. If you've been watching world events, your faith is going to be challenged. You have a Seventh-day Adventist running for president, and he's starting to talk about his faith, and people are jumping on the bandwagon. Romans 14, 22 and 23. It says, Hast thou faith? <clears throat> Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. That's a confusing verse that Paul wrote. But if we look it up in the commentaries, <clears throat> it says this, it is a conviction of right and wrong, resulting in the termination, the determination to do whatever is believed to be God's will. Paul's meaning is that if a Christian does not act from a strong personal conviction that what he does is right, but instead complies weakly with the judgment of others, then his action is sinful. The Christian should never violate his conscience. It may require educating. It may tell him that certain things are wrong that in themselves may not be wrong. But until convinced by the word of the Spirit of God that a certain course is proper for him, he ought not to pursue it. He must not make others the criterion for his conduct. He must go to the scriptures and learn his duty in that matter. Now, as I did this and I did my Sabbath school lesson, I discovered something about the conscience. I've had people just recently, due to our meetings, tell me what their conscience is telling them. And their conscience is going against scripture. Can our conscience go against Scripture? It can. You can go by what you believe, and that's in you. And you don't believe you're doing anything wrong. But the Sabbath school lesson said something interesting. It says that we need to have our conscience changed by the Word of God. Now, that's interesting. In other words, I was born and raised Catholic. So conscientiously, 
Was there anything that I couldn't eat? No. Would it bother me to eat anything? No. But when I got into the Word of God, now my conscience tells me it bothers me to eat certain things. Did my conscience change? Yes. And it changed for the good. It changed towards the Word of God. So when you hear somebody say it doesn't bother them, believe me, they're telling you probably the truth. They don't believe in the Bible enough that what they read should change their conscience. But your conscience can be changed. Martin Luther's conscience didn't bother him over relics and statues in the church. He worried about his sin. He beat himself. But when he went to Rome and he saw how they lived and went back and went through the word of God and found that verse that says, by faith, by faith, his conscience changed. And suddenly he didn't follow the relics and the worship of statues and other things, candle lighting, penances. You see, his conscience changed according to the word of God. And I'm just sharing this with you, brothers and sisters. We need to be in the word so that our conscience is following God's will and not our own. Over and over again, you'll hear people say, that doesn't bother me. And I'm telling you probably the truth, it doesn't. But if they would re read the Word of God and get, and get buried into the Word of God, their conscience would be pricked and their conscience would be changed to where they would follow God. Was the Apostle Paul bothered by the fact of killing all the Christians? No. But when God knocked him off his horse and gave him three days to think about it, and when a man came and prayed for him and, and the scales fell from his eyes and he could now see, he went away and restudied the scriptures, not as a Pharisee of the Pharisees, but a follower of this one that knocked him off his horse. You know what we say today. When somebody's a little too proud, they need to be knocked off their horse. Some of our sayings today are biblical. And when he studied the scriptures this time, thinking more about Christ, what did he find? His conscience changed. And when he thought of all the Christians he killed, before it didn't bother him. What does he call himself in the scriptures because of that? And of sinners, I am the chief. He killed God's people. He felt he was unworthy to even be a Christian. So today, before God, will you make it a matter of choice on your part to follow the word of God, making it your guide in all your beliefs? This young lady said she wants to follow what she learned, the beliefs that she learned straight out of the scriptures each night. She can follow it, and the next one sitting next to her can walk away. Because we either go by our conscience or we let God be our conscience. If your answer is yes, then give three topics some thought. In fact, more topics than that. Think about this. Tithes and offerings. Do you pay tithes? Do you pay offerings? Should we? How do you know? Because the word of God, David, because the word of God says a man robs God unless he pays tithes and offerings. Should we be faithful in that? We should. You rob God otherwise. Well, some have told me with their conscience, that's Old Testament. Find it in the New. Can you find tithes in the New Testament? Where do you find it? You find it, the best place to find it is in Matthew. Jesus, in Matthew 23, 23, he says this to the Pharisees and Sadducees. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, 
For you tithe in mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment and mercy and faith. These ought you have done and not to leave the other undone. Is Jesus saying we should pay tithe? Yes. They were finicky about the little seeds, the herbs, and making sure they paid one out of ten seeds to the temple. And yet they didn't love people. Jesus is saying you ought to love people, but don't leave the other undone. So when people tell me it's not in the New Testament, it is in the New Testament. In fact, if you have a red letter, it's in red letters. Jesus is saying what we should do and not to leave the tithe go. Christian dress. The Bible says, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel and shamefacedness and sobriety, not in broided hair and gold and pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. How we dress, brothers and sisters, how we dress should be becoming for God. We should dress like Christians. Food. 1 Corinthians 10.21 You cannot drink the cup of the Lord, it says, and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. This would go with physical food. This would go with spiritual food. But you and I know 1 Corinthians 10.31. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do to the glory of God. You and I should be living to glorify God. When someone sees how we live and how we eat, it should be biblical. It should sear our conscience to go against what God says. Baptism, we just had three. Romans 6, 3 through 6. Know you not that so many of you as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also what? Walk in newness of life. We should walk like a new person. The old person died in the water. All the old habits, you will struggle with these old habits. You may do one of the old habits, but your conscience should be seared. It should bother you to go back to the old way. And not because your friends do it or, or you don't see others in the church doing it. It's because you want to follow what God says. It says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin. Sabbath keeping. Sabbath keeping. Sabbath cannot replace Sunday. Does anyone here know a Sunday keeper? I haven't met one yet. Does anybody here know that a Sunday keeper that keeps from sundown Sabbath to sundown Sunday? Anybody know one? You haven't met a Sunday keeper. You've met somebody that goes to church on Sunday. You've met somebody that claims that Sunday is the day to go to church. But before church, you have no idea how they live, and after church, you have no idea how they live. I've told stories of coming down highways and seeing them come out of the church drive, and they almost clip your car trying to get to a restaurant. According to the Bible, we know it should be Saturday. But even according to the Bible, the fourth commandment, if you change Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday, should they go out to eat after church? But today there's Adventists going out to eat after church. And not a shocked face in the bunch. Are we progressing or regressing, brothers and sisters? Are we keeping the Sabbath like Sunday keepers keep Sunday? The Sabbath should be a 24-hour period that belongs to God. You should read the fourth commandment, Exodus 20. 
8 through 17, all the way through, 1 through 17. And it tells us that the Sabbath is a holy time. In it thou shalt do no work, nor your maid, manservant, stranger within your gates. And yet we go out to eat. We break the Sabbath being Sabbath keepers. And should we be Seventh-day Adventists only on the seventh day? I've said it before, and I like saying it. We should be seven-day, seventh-day Adventist. Seven days of the week, you should be a seventh-day Adventist. Living for God, having your conf conscience seared should you go against what God wants. And what about marriage? Ephesians 5, 25 through 28. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, I could condemn myself for that. Losing temper with Mary Ann, getting outrageous, having my own way. How about you? Do you know what this says? Roger, this says, Husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church and died for the church. Does the church love Jesus? No, does the church love Jesus? Did the old church love Jesus? Are we any different today? Anybody here sin? Are you with me? Does Jesus still love you? Even though you sinned? Even though tomorrow you may sin? Does Jesus still love you? And yet we as husbands... Love your wife and give yourself for her. That he might sanctify. Talking about Jesus, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that should be holy and without blemish. Jesus would do anything for the church. What about us men? So ought men not to love their wives like they love their own bodies? He that loveth his wife loveth himself, it says. Parenting. Proverbs 22, 6. We take this for granted, brothers and sisters. How many of you have kids outside the church and you claim Proverbs 22, 6? Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Lord, I claim that. I claim that. Did you really train your children right? Think about it. Did you do everything right with your kids? To claim that promise, I'm telling the Lord, I did everything I could for my kids. And I can remember getting home from church and saying things about the sermon or Sabbath school right in front of my kids. Is that training your kids right? Is it? We claim this promise when we might not have done the first part of it. Train up your children in the way they should go. They're watching you. Bible study. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. How much Bible study do you do? How much Bible study do I do? I read books that says the pastor, never use your sermon as your Bible study. Don't try to get away with the fact you just put four hours into a sermon and that's your Bible study. You, pastor, need your own Bible study. It may be a different verse in the Bible that God needs to talk to you. Bible study. Study to what? Show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Somebody asked you a question and you weren't sure of the answer. Rightly dividing the word of truth. 
Remember this, brothers and sisters. If you believe what you like in the gospel and reject what you don't like in the gospel, it's not the gospel you believe in. It's yourself. And your conscience isn't seared by God. You haven't turned your will totally over to God. You and I need to be living by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And how can we live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God when we haven't even read every word in the Bible? And reading the Bible and studying the Bible is two different things. I'm not stepping on your toes today. I'm stepping on mine. Brothers and sisters, we need to be what we claim to be. Adventist. Does anybody know what an Adventist is? Do you know, Roberta? An Adventist is someone who's living and looking for Jesus to come. We need to be on our toes, not have them stepped on. I thought about this today with three baptisms, training other people to be Seventh-day Adventist. What will they see in you if they look up to you to be their, their model role, their hero in the church? What will they see in you? Are you a good Seventh-day Adventist? What do you think? Do we fall short? Brothers and sisters, I say this the way I'm saying it because I've just watched last week and the week before something happened that has totally amazed me. The Antichrist is on the move. We should be. We are the only people on this earth that are still Protestants. And may God bless us to be that to protest what's happening today. Are you ready to suffer for Jesus Christ? I hope so, because it's coming. And how rapid will they be? The last days will be rapid ones. It's coming, brothers and sisters. I hope you and I are prepared. And what do we have to live by? Blind faith. You have to believe in this message that we as Adventists are right. So let's sing about our faith. Faith is the victory. Please rise for closing song.
Does anybody know what the world is? It's just sitting there singing that over and over again, that overcomes self. You and I have got to overcome self. Our dear Heavenly Father, as we think about this today, and it seems like a, a sober sermon to preach after a baptism when three people want to commit their lives to you, but Lord, help us to realize baptism is a commitment. It's saying that we won't live for self anymore. The old man of sin is dead now, and we want to rise out of that watery grave and live a life for you, putting on a new creature that only you can give. So I pray for these three that have committed their life, and I pray for each one in this room, Lord, that in baptism, just in thought, we recommit our lives. Lord, are we really committed to what we're into right now? Because if we're hoping that the time goes on and that we can rest in the grave, it may not happen. We may be asked to stand true to you, and we're going to need to know what the Bible says in order to do it. The faith that overcomes the world, the faith that overcomes the foe, we need this faith. And I ask for this faith for myself and each one here today, that we get into the word like never before that we pray like never before, and that we witness like never before to all the people that we meet. Lord, help us to be among those that are faithful in the very end. I pray this, and I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask our three, Roberta, Larry, and Kathleen, if you'd come up front, and everyone could greet them. How many, so I don't forget, how many would like to accept them into our fellowship right now? Yeah. Amen. If you'd like to come up front right now, uh, Marianne will play, and uh, we'll welcome them in the church. Come from whatever direction and go out another one. <laughs> to announce to remind you Wednesday I don't know if it was announced but it's in your bulletin Wednesday there's a supper before prayer meeting so those coming to prayer meeting if you'd come early if you haven't been to prayer meeting we're doing that new book on prayer and health and uh, bring your book come to prayer meeting come early and enjoy a supper it's put on by the uh, adventures and the pathfinders no just the adventures so they're putting on a supper, raise funds so that they can do the things they'd like to do. So I offer that to you today too. May God bless. Mm -hmm. 